Hey everybody, welcome back to another movie review. Hope you guys have been enjoying the content on the channel as of late. Uh, we we just did a review for the, the boys in the boat, and I guess you could say as a uh, spiritual-like sequel to that review, we're going to be doing another, another boy-type uh, movie by the title. Um, I know it's a stretch, but just go with me. Um, that film being uh, The Boy and, Her and the Heron. Is the Heron? I think that's how I say it. Um, directed by uh, Hayao Miyazaki, uh, who of course you guys know for Studio Ghibli and for tons of work that we have discussed on this channel. Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, uh, gosh, what other ones has he done? There's been ones of his that I have not seen, like Castles, Castle in the Sky, Ponyo, um, there was another one of his, oh, Princess Mononoke, obviously, that would be another good film of his. Um, this being billed as his potential uh, final film, uh, I'm not sure if he's gone on record saying that, or people are just, you know, kind of putting words in his mouth, I'm not sure, but I believe it's being uh, billed as his final uh, film. Um, tells a story of a young boy who uh, loses his mother at a very young age, and um, he, uh, is grieving absolutely and dealing with the trauma that came with seeing, with the, you know, with, with the, with the passing of his mother and wasn't just seeing such a thing, uh, her, you know, being engulfed in flames, um, as the film illustrates. And, um, he is trying to adapt to a new living with his father and a new uh, woman in his life, uh, the father's life that is due to have a baby and, uh, and to be his mother. Um, and of course, tensions are there because, you know, he is he's still grieving over the loss of his mother. And uh, the the mother that he is, um, that the, the, the new mother of the picture, um, it looks a lot like, to his face, to his view, a lot like his mother. And uh, so there's a lot of distance that is made between the two. And from that, uh, a heroine, a gray hero, hero, not heroine, heron, uh, comes into the picture and starts to just literally just fly around uh, the boy's existence, sort of, you know, tries to do things and say things. And there's also a a house uh, in the forest, and the 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 new mother decides one day just to wander into the forest walks into said castle, and then we start off this, uh, this crusade, this advent, this quest to find, uh, his new mother, and through so, obviously, a obvious metaphor of sorts about, about him trying to get his, his mother back, because there's also the literal, uh, literal idea that he may find, um, he may find, uh, something of his from his past something that he has been looking for so um and what you'll get from the film is a pretty straightforward idea about grief and how one deals with it and how one processes it and ultimately how one rebuilds and how they find a way out of said um of said depression and said sadness um and with miyazaki i mean his craftsmanship is just I mean, just electric. I mean, he's um, there's a there's a patience with this film that is very different from his other films. There's you know an energy here which is much lower, much calmer. And Miyazaki traditionally is fairly calm with his sensibilities, but there's a little bit more uh, variety, a little bit more uh, a little bit more of an edge. You know, with here there is a greater emphasis on tone and greater emphasis on a lower like um demeanor you know an overall tone it's just very very calm and very within so within that uh, illustrating a more personal lens uh because obviously the film uh if you did your research on it is uh takes a lip say some inspiration from his own uh life miyazaki uh and uh and some of his uh childhood upbringings and it does feel that way where it does feel more of a personal lens than anything and I think a little more abstract than, uh, than you know, than Miyazaki traditionally is. I mean, obviously Miyazaki plays with a lot of 
uh, a lot of aesthetics and a lot of visuals to illustrate a certain point or a variety of points depending on what film you're watching like Howl's Moving Castle for instance which I think I think becomes a bit overcomplicated because of how how much it's wanting to pack within its film um, we're spirited away and we're Princess Mononoke feel a lot more um, digestible uh, because of their central because of being more centralized to a certain idea whereas House Movie Castle was kind of floating around and with this there is that floaty like quality it's a very um it's what I'm looking for it's a it's a film that is very wondrous um, in nature uh, you know a lot of the ideas a lot of visual ideas that the film represent almost feel uh, standard you know by it by design you know just you know, there are more illustrations of his grief and these this 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 uh this this battle between, you know, his humanity and that of uh his depression, you know. So it's like this back and forth. Nothing was more no notable knowing than that than these like these souls that like that like kind of circle around, you see these pelicans trying to devour them and these ideas about stones and um and and about death and you know about accepting all those things um and of course you know the biggest hint of all is like the little the, the bricks at the end you know having to rebuild you know build rebuild build choose your own way and then of course he makes his own decisions um you know it's it's wondrous and it does feel um that some of those uh visuals don't have as much impact and at some points also feel a bit um, um, absent in definition. I'm not saying that they don't lack definition. It's just that it's hard to. Um, sometimes it's hard to gauge what's um, what's being said in a you know uh, on a more deeper level. But um, but the spirit of Miyazaki's films and the spirit of how you know he represents his ideas, it's still found here. I mean, I I was swept up in it. I found myself emotional. I was at one point uh, tearing up because, uh, you know, the, the central idea of a boy grieving over the loss of somebody or just in general of someone l l grieving over the loss of somebody, you know, that, that hit me, you know, uh, especially now, um, but not to get too personal, but, but, um, but yeah, uh, I think that as a film, I do believe the, that, that, it is much more cut and dry uh, than I was um, than I was imagining. Again, there are those there are those ideas that are um, that that kind of float and they don't have as much definition to them. Um, and then there are times where it's just pretty definite as to what is happening and how we are supposed to how we are supposed to take. Uh, you know the what what the overall message is supposed to be, um, which again is this idea of, of grief and how we process it and how we come to accepting um, past events and just overall circumstance and how we end up moving forward towards a better future and accepting the the things that are that are laid out to us now in the present and learning to cherish those things and instead of just pushing those things you know to the to the other side because of what they remind us of. Um, so, you know, it's something that I can relate to quite a bit, and, um, you know, to, to a certain measure, it was, it was easy to pick up on in terms of a message, you know. I, I, I got the idea, like, halfway through that it, is, that it was about grief and about um, how one deals with such a thing. Um, and for me, it was a little bit more standard, you know, but... It has that that it has that spirit. It has that um, it has that passion. And it has just visually, just also just again a breathtaking looking film. Um, it has all the qualities of Miyazaki. The only thing that it lacks is that um, is that more in depth study of its idea, where I think that Spirited Away and uh, uh, Princess Mononoke I think are more of a study of its ideas. Um, this feels more more or less, you know, just, you know, kind of on the surface. At times, like I said, it does get to those points where you you are catching elements that are not as um, 
that are not as clear. Um, like there's this gate, you know, at some point, and they never return to that gate. I'm trying to figure out what that gate was meant to represent. Was that meant to represent like uh, more of his grief, more of his like downfall towards his like depression? Um, you know, it's because he's drawn to that sort of thing. You know, I think that might be what the what that's meant to represent is that it's meant to represent his how he's so drawn to that emotion and how he's so attached from that, and everything that 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 comes his way is to push him, you know, towards. Um, the right path or a path of honesty because that's ultimately what the pelicans represent you know the pelicans they, they talk about how they like they're they're deceivers they're liars but ultimately they're the most honest the most honest figures you know even the pelican said that like, we don't lie and that's the nature of honesty is that it hurts you know it's not meant to be um easy it's meant to be something that you process and learn to uh, to be to be to, to be accepting of and also just to flat out have, be respectful of. I mean, it's better to have that sort of nature and have that sort of thing in us instead of just lying to ourselves all the time about how we're how we're feeling and all these sort of things, you know. Um, like, that's what the pelican, I think, really represents, you know. And to a certain extent, that's how the ending you can interpret as well, is, is that he wa is now walking a path of honesty and walking on, in a path of 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 of, uh, of security, you know, he's much more confident, you know. Um, but it all falls back to the same idea about grief and how we process it, and how we learn to move forward in our lives. And it's resonant, and it's it, it has that emotional edge. Um, it's much more patient than I am used to, and it has a much more uh, calmer uh, attitude than uh, traditionally in Miyazaki films. There's a little bit more energy that takes place in Miyazaki films. Um, but it works to its benefit. I just wish that there was more dimensions to the film. Um, and if there are, I feel that I am not able to gauge. So um, so good piece. I still, I still enjoyed it quite a bit, but I do think that it lacks that dimension that I come to see for Miyazaki. Um, but it has that emotion, it has that, that those, those visuals, it has all the other elements, just not the, just not the layers that I see, that I seek in Miyazaki usually, so. But pretty good, pretty good. So, um, for a final film, I think he, if it, if it truly is his final film, I think that he leaves things on a good note. Um, and you know, it, 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 if it illustrates Miyazaki's, like, feelings overall as a filmmaker, I feel like it's, it's just as a person in general, just, you know, because, you know, art, people like to say that art is not really reflective. I mean, to a certain extent, sure, but there are a lot of times where art is very self-reflective, and uh, this is absolutely that. And based on how the movie ends and what, what we're supposed to, how I gauge that ending, I think this is very appropriate. In being Miyazaki's final film and uh, you know he's he's a great filmmaker I think this is a good stop um, and just satisfying very very satisfying so so yeah so those are my thoughts on the boy and the heron uh, I thought it was pretty good uh, again a pretty good send-off if it is for Miyazaki uh, but you guys let me know. You guys know your thoughts on The Boy and the Heron, if you guys uh, checked it out. Uh, there was actually a couple people in the theater who went to see it, and based on the based on just the room, it seemed like people enjoyed it. Um, but you guys know your thoughts on The Boy and the Heron, how it compares to other Miyazaki films, and just in general of your thoughts on Miyazaki. Um, and if it truly is his final film, let me know, because I've heard conflicting reports mostly saying that it is his final film. I've heard some people say that that's not or that it, there's potentially more out there for him. Uh, you guys let me know, just clarification if you know. Um, but, but yeah, that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in, and until then, I will catch you guys in the next video.